Andrew, in your book, Chasing the Red Queen, you are making the argument that uh, since World War II, we've been applying these industrial chemicals and that the plants or the bugs or the things we're trying to kill have been adapting. So it's 2018. Where are we in the race? Are the chemicals still ahead of the bugs? Are the bugs about to catch up? And like, you know, because it's still, it's still plenty of food when I go to the supermarket. So it seems like we're still getting food. Where is the race right now? And where do you see us in 5, 10, 15 years? Um, we are falling behind in the race. I don't think there's any question about that. The, the race I refer to is this race, the, the Red Queen race with Alice runs with the Red Queen and they run as fast as they can and they don't actually get anywhere. And this analogy has been used in evolutionary biology to represent two organisms that are competing with each other or one is attempting to eat the other one and as each one adapts to the presence of the other, the other adapts in return to the presence of the first. And this back and forth adaptation process is never ending, never ending. And the problem is that if you stop racing, you lose and the other wins. So it's a race that has to be run, but it's a race that there is no finish line for. <clears throat> when we started using pesticides in the late 1940s, it was only a few years, and the first word was DDT, the first terrestrial pesticide, that we really started applying uh, on a large scale. It was, it was clear within just a few years that insect resistance was on the rise very quickly. Um, and after seven, eight years, uh, DDT was largely ineffective in many areas where it had been widely applied. And our response to that should have been that was probably not a good idea. We need to go back to some other system. But our, 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 what we did instead was we thought, we'll just make better chemicals because that one clearly wasn't good enough, which is a tough thing to say about DDT. That's about as good as it gets when it comes to killing uh, insects. So they don't come a lot better than that. And we thought, we'll just make better ones or, or chemicals that can hit them harder, you know. The, the, the emergence of pest resistance was really obvious, and we knew what just happened, but we turned our back on that information and we just forged ahead anyway. And now here we are in 2018. There are some 30 different categories of herbicides called modes of action MOAs. There are about 30 insecticide categories. We've got hundreds and hundreds of chemicals in those different categories. We have one pest, the green peach aphid, which is the smallest, squishiest, softest, least defended bug you will ever find. And it is resistant to 75 different chemicals. You can't kill that thing with chemicals. You can kill it with your thumb, but you can't kill it with a chemical. <clears throat> In 70 years, we've managed to turn our world into a world filled with super pests. And it was so easy to do. It really was. You just add chemicals and they become super pests. And then you just add a different chemical and now they're double super pests. And the, take the, the least of them all and it turns out to be something you just can't kill. And it went from being the green peach aphid to becoming a pest on 50 different plants that we grow for commercial purposes. In the 1940s, if you counted up all the losses that farmers took from pests and from this and that and spoilage and uh, processing, it was about a third of the crop was lost. And here come the promise of technology and chemicals to help us overcome this loss that really is, the farmers didn't appreciate that loss. And, but the here comes this promise of technology. And we had just come out of this era of medicine and science solving problems. I mean, insurmountable problems it seemed like, but, but coming out of the, the medical breakthroughs of the 30s and 40s, I mean, we were talking about we could solve anything with science. And so that's the way we saw this. We didn't look at it as, oh, we should, probably shouldn't do this. No, science is providing us with an answer. Technology will solve these problems. And here we are 70 years later, farmers are addicted to chemicals, the soil is nearly dead, we're having problems with water pollution, air pollution, depletion of resources, loss of biodiversity, you name it, you know, you know the story. 
how much of our crops are we still losing on average from the time we grow them to the time they get marketed? About one third. The promise of chemicals has fallen flat, absolutely flat. The amount of damage we've done in the meantime is impressive. Um, and it's <clears throat> the, the Red Queen is winning. We are running from behind. We're always trying to catch up. We are never, ever going to be leading this race. And so it is time for us to reconsider how we do this, how the, we do the business of growing food in our society. Just a quick anecdote. Uh, back in the days uh, when GMOs were first coming out, I interviewed some of the um, Monsanto scientists, the research scientists who developed this stuff um, in St. Louis. And I asked them, I said, okay, so everything's going to be doused in Roundup, but aren't the weeds going to, you know, evolve resistance? They went, yeah, but we'll come up with something else. I would just add on a, on a different note, um, this is all reflective of human society's um, pattern of trying to dominate nature, conquer nature in every respect. And it's a failed model. I mean, we find it over and over again, and we're finding it in the biggest way possible now as nature rebels against all of the pollution and toxins we've put into it. Um, you know, obviously way before climate change, but now this is the, the big one <laughs> where, where nature is, is saying, no, you know, you've put way too much of this junk into the environment and it's just not, you know, it's not going to work. And, you know, so we're, we're, we're not learning this lesson um, that on every single level, it seems that nature comes up with its form of resistance to uh, our innovations and our technologies. Um, so I'll just add that to the picture. Thank you.